And welcome back to The Breakfast. So we're now moving into a conversation that has made headlines across the country this morning. Um, uh, issues that, of course, have happened in the last couple of years that eventually led to a particular incident on Friday in the southwest. Um, the police say culprits behind violence in Igongong will be brought to justice. Of course, violence erupted in the you know the town in uh, Ibarakba North, local government area for your state, over the weekend when a Yoruba activist, Sunday Adeyemo, and his supporters reportedly and allegedly stormed the Fulani settlement in the town to eject the Seriki Fulani, Salihu Abdul Kadir, and some other headsmen who he accused of fueling the security problems in the area. He claimed the headsmen committed crimes such as kidnapping, uh, rape, killings, and invading farmlands with their cattle. Some persons were killed, allegedly, while property worth several millions of naira were set ablaze during the clash. We've uh, invited to speak with us this morning about this, Libros Oshoma, a legal practitioner, and uh, Mr. Mark Adebayo, a public affairs analyst. Um, but before we get into that, we'd like to, of course, play something for you. It's uh, from the Wilson Center by former President Olusegun Obasanjo, and this, I believe, happened in 2019. His thoughts back then on the atrocities by the headsmen across Nigeria. We'll be back after this. When you have a situation where your own tribe is being accused of something, now you must be able to look into it and make it transparently clear that that accusation is unfounded or if it's founded, you deal with it. The, there have been well, herdsmen, uh, 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 farmers. Now, herdsmen are mainly Fulanese. Nothing has been done. Rather than doing something about it, what we are having is, okay, we will create colonies, cattle colony. Where will you create colony in Nigeria? Is it in my own part of the country that you will now make a colony? Who will give you land to create colony within its own uh, state? So these are specific. You are asking for specific. I can go on and on. But there are many things that should not have been done that have been done, and many things that should have been done that are not been done, that will have helped in the area of management of diversity. Thank you, President. All right. And uh, of course, like he said, many things that should have been done that still have not been done. And that was from 2019. We're currently in 2021 and it doesn't seem like a lot has changed. So we're going to once again say good morning to Mr. Mark Adebayo. Uh, thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right. We also have uh, with us in studio, Mr. Libra Soshoma. Thank you also for, for stepping in um, and for being a part of the program. All right, so I'm going to start with, you know, our uh, guest who's joining us virtually, Mr. Adebayo. Um, I, I want you to quickly share your thoughts on the events on, uh, that took place on Friday in Igongo and um, the narrative that has started to spew from that event, um, the arrest warrant or rather the arrest, uh, the call for the arrest of uh, Sunday Adeyemo and um, all of that, you know, that has happened. Let's quickly get your thoughts on, uh, on that. Of, uh, of Sunday is not, so, not only unwarranted, but utterly ridiculous. What has come to Some people are being raped by this killer harder. Some people's farm are being raped by this killer harder. When people are being kidnapped by this killer harder. When towns and cities are being destroyed by this killer harder. This government is Go on mute. This government will not see anything. But at any point that people resist, at any point that people fight back, at any point that people resort to self help in order to protect and defend themselves, this government comes to life. Then we begin to hear Garba Shehu. You know, the mouthpiece of the Miyaki Allah uh, Association, the government, the mouthpiece of the, 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 the very government has become the largest of the of the, of the terrorist others in this country. That is what, since 2015, that we came into power. We do know, and then, of course, I want to correct an impression. The this idea of uh, simplifying the mandate of the killer others as just 
uh, other farmers' plan. So it is other, it is still other part of the rest of us. They go into towns, they go into cities, it's not only the farm. You know, it's only that uh, the, the first line of suffering from these killer others are the farmers. But you know, they go to the your roads, to stay from to stay here. So the call for is it in your balance? We need about five hundred more Sunday to hold. In your balance, we need a minimum of six bio your bio sheet as governor of, of, of our state in your balance. So that they will be able to tackle this menace. Head on. You know, we don't we don't need we don't need powers as our governor. You know, when you push a people to the wall, you you, you don't respect them to talk they will push people. Okay. And you have a government that has been to protect the people, the people eventually will start to separate. All right, but you hold, hold on, um, Mr. Demo. Oh, Mr. Debayo, I beg your pardon. All right, kindly yeah. hold on, uh, Mr. Debayo. We're going to bring in Liberal Sushoma now. You, you, we're also having challenges with the quality of sound from your um, from your end. So hopefully we can sort that out in the, um, the time that uh, Liberal is speaking. So let's also get your your thoughts on um, what has happened so far. Former President Julio Gombasanjo gave his thoughts in 2019. We're still talking about it in 2021. Um, quick analysis. Yeah, um, I would um, um, start from where Mr. Adibayo stopped um, and um, quote my, um, my a, a phrase I use, you know, repeatedly uh, by Fidel Castro. In a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law-abiding. And when you push a people to you know, lawlessness, or you encourage lawlessness, what you're indirectly um, encouraging is, um, you know, those who are law-abiding should also be lawless. Um, there is crime everywhere, but it is when you condone it, it now festers, when there are no consequences for such crime. I'll quickly start from, remember during the militancy in the Niger Delta, you know, you had a president eventually you know, the presidency was donated to them to assuage the feelings of people from that area um, so that the government can consistently make the natural resources from there. We did say, and then when amnesty was introduced, some of us did say that what you're encouraging is lawlessness. That look, we can't deal with lawlessness. And so let us, you know, embrace these people. And then came Buhari. Once Buhari came, headsmen who ordinarily couldn't even write statements before suddenly had an association. You had, I grew up, you know, intermingling with headsmen from my village in Anagbete to Auchi. We had Zongo. These places where, where you had headsmen, wherever they were coming from, they settled there. It didn't just start today. And we didn't, um, we're never scared when we go to the farm and you see headers, you know, because they won't come to disrupt your, your crops. And we had consistently lived peacefully together over the years. And suddenly came President Muhammadu Buhari, and then you had these clashes. You had the, this invasion. I won't call it a clash. It's not a clash. It's an invasion. And rather than government putting its foot down to say, this is not what headers represents. This is not what Fulanese represents. They slept on it. We started making excuses for it. Gradually, if it, at the initial stage, it was that no, we should remove Fulani from it. It's just, you know, headers clash. <laughs> and then even the president described it as a clash with farmers. And some leaders of thought said, no, this is not a clash. I'm not, I mean, my farm, and somebody came to invade my farm, kill, rape, and then you say it's a clash. This is not a clash. And so because the government was silent and lackadaisical and seemingly or tacitly, you know, folded his hand because of where they were coming from, and it became an everyday thing that even the average farmers now decided to collaborate in some cases because you also have villagers who are collaborating with these people to kidnap. So it's not just, you know, a question of um, it's all about the full and Because that's where a lot of people are getting it wrong. Though is it because uh, the president is from there now that every crime is about the full and it's No. Because now they are so emboldened that if you want to commit a crime, you need them in front. Because nobody will do them anything. The one that was arrested in my village, 
The guy said that if you take him anywhere, he will still come back because nothing will okay. happen to him. That is how emboldened the state has emboldened criminals. All right, Mr. Mr. We... Shuma, can I, can I bring in Mr. Adebayo here? Because we really are running short uh, behind time. Mr. Adebayo, do we still have you there? Okay, you and Mr. Oshama have agreed on one thing, that uh, including uh, Sunday Adeyemo, he said this, that the government has been passive regarding insecurity over the years, and, you know, that's why they had to take laws into their own hands. But does this in any way justify what occurred yesterday, occurred on Friday, with, you know, the touching of the house of the Iseki Fulani, you know, the destruction of property, and the unrest right now in the country? Does that justify it? Well, it um, action to reaction. At any point, if you have a government that's supposed to protect you against criminals, and for that government to speak for the criminals, the people have no choice than to respond in the best way possible to defend themselves. You don't sit down, and I am not sure you have a job here because he has been an elder lawyer and acting. I know you, you, you don't see that self defense is not a crime. It cannot be a crime. In a situation we have by the government, the primary responsibility of government shall be the protection of life and property. And the federal government under Buhari has totally failed since 2015 to protect the people, to secure the people. The people cannot sit down and everybody will die. Somebody must rise up on behalf of the people. If there's, a, there's, there's no farmer at that point, if you kill others for the death of us, they are everywhere on our highways. They take their cab like that is happening in Benin two years ago. If, if they are everywhere, they are criminals, and this government, the Supreme government, defends them. They, they defend them. If they are killing people, don't share the government. But at any point that the people now they are to defend themselves, see them unleash it on them. Look, look at what happened in the state in Yewanon. We are Soldiers from as at the five artillery brigade, Alam and Abel, led Ada to pillage Asa, Bepu, Akon, and then they went there. The soldiers went there and were making it compulsory for the soldiers to allow these others to enter their farm and destroy their farm. And they were beating the soldiers. Soldiers that cannot wait for Boko Haram. Soldiers that are running away from the project. They are now attacking soldiers on behalf. Of the other. That is why the government of that one is the number one enabler of the killer other. All right, Mr. Adebayo. Um, Mr. Adebayo, unfortunately, we're having issues with your audio, but we'll come back to you in just a moment. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to try Shuma, and reconnect with him. Yes. Mr. Adebayo just mentioned that, you know, alleged that the president is the number one spokesman for killer headers in the country. That's what he's saying. And that in, in light of the current circumstances, there needed to be someone to rise up for the people, which is what Sondi Ademo has said. But what's the likelihood of this Oyo scenario empowering other states to do the same and attack Fulanis and herdsmen in their own states? Um, I would... Um... I would say that um, no justification for such killings, no matter what, there shouldn't be any justification for such killings, especially given the fact that the, those that you are attacking now might probably even be the innocent ones. They might be the innocent ones. The criminally minded ones are in the bush, you know. Um, they come to, to the road or come to the villages, raid these villages, and then fall back to the bush. And then now you're attacking, probably attacking the innocent ones. And so for me, this is a pointer to the fact that government should do something immediately. Because when you refuse to protect the people, you also are indirectly exposing you know, the innocent one. And then when the innocent one also are unable to protect or, or they do not get the uh, commercial protection from government, they might also be forced to take up arms against some other persons. You know, so at the end of the day, you're gradually setting the country that you are supposed to protect on fire with your lackadaisical attitude. And why people would say, point black, uh, that uh, the president is a spokesperson? Because his actions... I, I, I think he used the word enabler. Enabler, uh, yes. Enabler. Yes, because when the same government that is always very slow to respond or take action 
in times of crisis, somebody issued ultimatum to killer headers, and not every Fulani in the state, the killer headers to leave the bush, and then immediately, the very next day, or even that same day, Gaba Shehu, you know, issuing a statement on behalf of the presidency, rose up and then, um, you know, with the message you're sending by such statement is that you're supportive of this killing. And yet you say the governor is the chief security officer of the state. And this is not the first time all of these issues of dialogue. At some point, if you remember in Kaduna State, uh, the governor even was allegedly said to have paid some of these people so that they can stop the killing. There was a time, I don't know if that video is also true, <coughs> when Dambazo um, uh, was minister for interiors, that there were allegations that the federal government was making moves to settle headers so as to stop the killing. So what are you doing? You're compensating criminality. And what you're telling the rest of the people who have been killed without compensation is that it is good to take up arms against the state. Mr. So, Oshama, that ultimatum that uh, Akira Delu gave expires today, right? Yes. So the question is, what will the government or the people in Ondo State do? And would this empower other people to do the same? Yes, it will. It will. For these are, they, remind you, Akere Dolu is a governor of the APC stock. If we were a PDP governor, that would be a different thing. Even the PDP governors have not been disemboldened. And, and so, he can't, he's, you call him the chief security officer of the state, and yet he commands no flag. He can't fold his hands and allow strangers, you know, slaughter the people that he's meant to protect without doing anything. And, and you see, we're treating these issues with kid gloves. We should find out what led to the establishment of Amoteco. Amoteco. And gradually, if care is not taken, in other states, they've established vigilante groups and you know, you know, empower them with guns and, and, and all of that. So gradually, before you know it, people will also begin to empower hunters like they've done in Boronu State. And, you know. So if care is not taken, what you're gradually going to be encouraging is that people will take their destiny in their hands to say, you know what, we need to protect our territory. Because like um, uh, T.Y. Danjuma said, the army is colluding. He repeated that word three times. And then also lastly, so that I can yield the floor, yeah. the, when the, the Northern Youth, R.Y. Youth, issued ultimatum to Igbos, we didn't hear Gabasho issue a statement. But the moment ultimatum was issued by, first by the governor and then uh, Sunday Bobo, Gaba Show immediately responded. The imp impression that the average man will get is that there are some persons who are above the law. That's what Obasanjo is referring to. Right. You should be able to put your foot down and say, no, this is my tribe. This is not what we represent. And the criminal element in this uh, tribe, we must fish them out and bring them to book so that the law-abiding ones will be able to carry on their business without harassment. All right. Mark Adebayo, I, I'm bringing you in here. I'm guessing you're still connected with us. Um, I, I want you to speak about the reaction of the Southwest governors. Uh, some have criticized Rotimi Akiridulu. Some have also criticized Governor Shei Makinde. Um, but I want your thoughts on how the Southwest governors have reacted so far with yeah, regards to protecting uh, lives of citizens in their, in their regions. And also, there's meant to be a meeting today with the Southwest governors and Mietiala. Um, how do you, know, do you think that would play out? And also, you know, what, what would you assess their reactions so far as? Liberal Soshima, we'll come to you to quickly address that. Mr. Yeah. Adebayo, apologies. I think we'll have to find ways to reconnect with you again. Um, I think the, the Southwest governors are playing politics with this issue. Um, trying to, you know, we operate a local government, a big local government structure here where the president is um, the monarchy president. He can do no wrong. So, and everybody will want to pander to us, the dictator. He commands the army, commands the police, commands everybody. And so, the governors command nothing. And then, um, once you belong to the same party, and knowing fully where the way you came into office, you want, even if your people are dying, provided it will guarantee you retaining that seat, you want to play politics with all of that. You know what? Even the formation of Amoteco, we saw the politics that they all played with it. And, but one thing I can assure them, if there is no peace in your state, even the government house will be too hot for you to occupy you. So that's why if you would, um, um, uh, if a dialogue is an option, they have been dialoguing. Nothing seems to be coming out of it. 
If dialogue is an option, go ahead consistently because there's always the table even, even before the war. And after the war, you always come back to the table. But in dialoguing, also show strengths that you cannot be taken for granted. And that if it is, you shouldn't go cap in hand begging people, criminals who are not state actors to cease fire when you know that, you know, with the state apparatus at your beck and call, you, you can also, wheel, yes. you know, retaliate. Because the moment you go cap in hand begging them, it, you, you are, you are, it's, it's a self-defeatist approach. You should also show strength that you can deal with it, you can crush, you, you know, um, uh, these people if need be. And then this attitude of the federal government security apparatus, it is high time we begin also to think of restructuring, you know, state security. The idea of uh, Moteku collaborating with police and they can't, um, they are not empowered with firearms, and yet the police is commanded from Abuja. And so the Amoteku uniform is not bulletproof. Amoteku uniform, you know, does not mean that once you say a killer should stop, a man carrying a gun, he will just kill you. So there's need for us to begin to discuss those issues also. Okay. So, because, so that you, you know that you can truly protect your, your, your territory. So we don't give, you know, opportunities to criminally minded people, even like uh, the son of Bobo, who was alleged to be a land grabber, now all of a sudden becoming, you know, a, a hero. hero amongst his people all right. because of this lacuna in, in, in our structure. I I'm aware we have Mr. Adebayo back online. Mr. Adebayo, do we have you? Are you here? Yes, fantastic. Not better. Okay. okay, now the Oyo State has a new commissioner of police. And this issue is, is, has gone beyond Oyo, Ondo, or any other southwest state. It's now a matter of national security because of the potential of it to you know, spill into other states and cause a crisis. So what do you think this new CP should do, and the federal government, in fact? Well, the first thing is that uh, this, uh, before, uh, this meeting, we yes. produce positive. Those guys, the governors, they will to them and still return to their personality. You can quote me, you can quote me on this. Until we start to what I think they will do their work. So the 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 one the CP of you know, um, it, it is something it's a it's something the governors of Southwest who are the major stakeholders should do. It's beyond the it's beyond the CP. The CP will not listen to the governors. The CP will only listen to directly from from Abuja. So and that's not how it works. You know, if they say policy is local, it's policy is even more local. And what they do, they should realize that people have not begun waiting for government now. They have realized now that they, are, they have to get the best in their hands and they have to protect themselves and their people and their, and their properties. So, if for example, I, I think the best thing for us with this issue is the fact that um, the resources that we have to come on for all this while cannot be more urgent than now. We cannot have a situation where we have a in Abuja and become public security in your state or state, uh, legal state or anywhere. So we need to, you know, each community now are becoming aware of the fact that they need to begin to protect their communities. It is a national issue because people are under activities, you know, are all over the country, from north to the west to the east to the south. So we got to wear. The problem we are having is not a single problem in showing some But when we have the government that actively support the action of terrorist action, you cannot have to listen to time. I challenge you to go to any police station this one today and report that others are rebelling your power. The police will not follow you anywhere. But if they hear that you have arrested one, one killer, the government will not the apparatus. Now, what happened in the government? Dr. Kolako, a PDO that who came from America to establish a farm in the Gogon, a large economic farm. The killer had that went to his farm and he saw his farm. He went to some people at this uh, palace to report. Here, he was elected to hide and macheted to death. That was why so, the, the people are me that uh, these guys went to attack and not so innocent that, uh, as my friend uh, is uh, saying okay. uh, in the studio. They are not as, but it was in the palace of Sonki Fulani that Dr. Kolapa was, was, was mastered to death. It was in his palace, I don't get it. So, um, the, the, the solution to this issue is for the government, federal government, to stop promoting, to, to stop enabling this killer order. 
the federal government of that one has been unable to kill The 100 billion that was offered to them, which they initially rejected, and they were demanding for 160 billion. You know, that everything was held in Italy. All the service people are there, including the Inspector General of Police and the Ambassador as Interior Minister. You are begging, you are begging criminal. Marca, you are offering Marca them money. Yeah. All right. So quickly, also because of time, I, I would like you know both of you to speak on the um, support you know that um, Fanny Ferry and the Southwest governors. Um, you know, I, people are expecting them to, of course, uh, be on the same side with Sunday Igbo at a time like this. I spoke with Yinkao Dumaki yesterday, and of course, he also had his own statements with regards to uh, Sunday Igbo's actions. So I want you, your thoughts on the Southwest governors um, and um, Afenifere, and you know, what the Southwest generally should be um, uh, having you know, their heads mentally at a time like this. Well, it should be a million percent support for people. If you speak to the regular you buy on the road to anywhere in the Southwest, you will see that the guy has a well support and solidarity from, from the general of your of the urban nation. And uh, I want the government to be careful the way they handle this matter. And the, uh, the MRA or detention or imprisonment of the people will worsen the matter. And we, we will have something worse than, worse than Boko Haram in our hands. Look at uh, IPOP. That was not a terrorist organization that this government declared a terrorist organization. They were not armed. They were just protected. Now they are armed by the, the this instant security network. If you propose your urban nation to that level, everything uh, 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 look, um, things will go rather okay. rather rather very bad. Okay. Okay. And uh, the government to, to apply, apply wisdom of the government does not have a lot of wisdom. It's only matter. Like, they just believe no, the fragmentation agenda is real. Okay. It's real. We thought it was a joke, but it's real. All right, hold on. People begin to believe in a way to deny that, to deny that, uh, that reality. All right, hold but on, Mr. 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 Adebayo. Um, Libra Sushomad, I want you to speak on that also. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky um, uh, moment. But you can all already sense that people are being careful with where they you know support and what they say and where no, what stance they take. Of, so because of the structure, because of the style of government that we operate, you know, where the president is um, all and all, is um, a democratic president, is a monarch, is a baba, and so um, he can do no wrong. And because of that, the Izvun is party. Some party members are scared to come out openly to criticize you know, his silence in the face of danger. It, it, there's nothing tricky about it. The only thing is that we should, people should be bold to speak up. People should, like Dele Momodu said, who will tell the president that he's sleeping? We should be bold to tell him that he's sleeping, that these were not the promises made. The people should, we shouldn't be waiting to die by installment. Do you know I traveled from Lagos to Benin and to my village and Egbete during the Yultai period, and a lot of people, you know, said if they had known that I was traveling, that they probably would have begged me. And I had the I was I had the confidence to travel because of the number of checks, police checks and army checks on the road. And, and so these were the same people who were saying should leave the road because you know the they paid you know the time of uh, traveling, but now we're happy seeing them on the road. I had the privilege of speaking with one of the army officers and he said, look, it doesn't take anything to root these people out of the forest, but these forests are not accessible. These are places where you usually had forest guards, but forest guard also had been decimated. So we, the Nigerian government intentionally refused to empower the police, even the army, to assess some of these places, they can't assess it via vehicles. You know, you will need to either use drone or helicopters. So they are not coming from the moon. And then we excuse it away to say, oh, because of the 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 um, the fact that uh, the chart basin is drying up. So if the chart basin is drying up, does that warrant the reason for invading people's farm and killing them? People mooted ideas of having ranches. The government said, no, we want to create a grazing colony. Where would you want to create a grazing colony when the population is increasing, there's hunger in the land, and you are also, this is the same government that is saying, let's encourage farming. Let's encourage farming. And the few people that are farming, 
then you have some miscreants and you, you know uh, 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 killer headers who are invading their farms and killing them. And what do you do in return? You fold your hands and say, no, live peacefully with them. And then we say it's tricky. It is not tricky. The only answer, the solution to this is for the governors to stand toe to toe with the president and say, look, you know, Mr. President, you have failed us. And also give the president ultimatum, not just those in the All right. <laughs> that if, if nothing is done between this time and this time, mm -hmm. we'll, we will not be able to stop our people from also taking up arms to defend them. All and right, the Mr. country Shema. will go up in flames. Yes, so we have noted your points, Julie. Okay. Uh, right, thank you so much, Mr. Adebayo, for being here on The Breakfast. Sadly, we've run uh, out of time. So thank much. you. Thanks for your thoughts. And Mr. Thank Shema, you. thank you. We can only hope that, you know, you know, throwing it back to your early days, that uh, the Fulani herdsmen and the rest of Nigeria can live, you know, peacefully and yes, coexist. been living peacefully you know. until Buhari came. Thank oh, wow. you very much for your thoughts <laughs> on the very Thank you very much, Professor. So we'll continue an analysis of uh, the president's uh, and his administration. Uh, that's uh, about what Jaga has said. He said the President Muhari's administration is very disappointing. We'll be discussing that with two analysts in just a minute. Do stay with us on the breakfast. <laughs>